everybody. Um, this is Aubrey Ballinger with EXP Realty, and we have an interesting topic today. So I wanted to bring on Dave Kennedy from Fidelity Land Title because he get, he called me yesterday with some interesting information. Um, so the topic today is actually going to be wire fraud. Um, whenever you start out a transaction, um, and even before you start out a transaction, and part of the consultation, we go over so much information. And one of the pages that as a buyer and as a seller that you sign is something about wire fraud. Um, I know I always tell you not to accept anything from me about wiring money. And it's actually a bigger issue than what you might think. So I wanted to bring Dave on because um, he's the one who handles the money at the end with the transactions. And he did bring it up to our attention that he's seen an uptick in things happening with some wire fraud. So I thought it'd be a great time to bring Dave on and just kind of give us some insight. Um, so Dave, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm Dave Kennedy. I know it says Sherry Kennedy on there and she also works with me here. We uh, have a little technical difficulties here, but um, yeah. So I'm Dave Kennedy at Fidelity Land Title, and our role in the transaction is to kind of act as kind of a middleman between, uh, you know, you, you as the buyer and your sellers. Or if likewise, if you're selling a house, we're you know operating between you and the buyers. Uh, and one of the aspects of what we do is handling the money because we're the escrow company. So we're going to handle all the funds for the transaction. So when you buy a house in Ohio. Any money that's over that you have to send to the closing that's over ten thousand dollars needs to be for, sent in the form of a wire transfer, um, and that's because of a, a good funds law that we have here in Ohio. So when you have to send a wire, you know it opens up the entire world to be able to try to break into the transaction and try to try to redirect those funds. So that's interesting, Dave, because like. I, I've heard about this in the past. So one of the things that I've done as a realtor is I use a product called LastPass. Mm -hmm. And the joke is you have to outrun the person and be faster than the other person so the bear is gonna get them, yep, right? Yep, exactly. So my passwords are super, super long and really secure. And I try to do that because of this issue. But how, I mean, how can somebody get into our systems or what are ways that people can find out this information yeah. to so support the transaction. It's kind of crazy. So you, know, my guess is the people that are perpetrating these frauds are, are is some sort of version of organized crime from around the world. And they are very sophisticated in how they're able to follow a transaction. Typically, they do not need very much information in order to be able to get going on a transaction. Everything we do now is digital. So starting with that listing, the original listing online, they know a house that's going to be up for sale. As soon as that house goes pending, it's usually marked online as being pending. Okay. Then what the fraudster could do is go to the county's website and they can find out exactly who um, they can find out exactly uh, you know who owns that house, the names of the sellers. They could even go back and look at prior listings to see, uh, you know, when they bought the property and try to figure out who was involved in that transaction, which lenders they worked with, which realtors they worked with. So the bottom line is everything's online and for just a few dollars, you can look up pretty much anything on anyone. So they're just looking for an in in the transaction. And then at that point, once they know that there is a transaction pending, they're going to try to find out who the buyers are. Who the, who the title company is, who the lender is, uh, everybody involved. And then they're gonna start probing to decide, find out whose email account they can kind of hack into to start monitoring the transaction. So they have all these different people to pick from, the sellers, the listing agent, the, real, the buyer's agent, the buyer, the title company, the lender. And if they can get into one account and start monitoring the transaction, at that point, they, they kind of know everyone that's involved in the transaction and exactly when it's closing, the dollar figures and the amount. So their goal is to gain access to people's email accounts and try to monitor the transaction. And then at the very right moment, right before you're closing, they're going to reach out to the buyer and say, hey, send your money here. Um, and that's where the fraud happens. And a lot of times these people, you know, you know, you see, you get an email who you think is from your realtor, you think from your lender, uh, or if you think it's from the title company and you just trust that it's correct, 
you can take the money to the wire instructions to the bank and you, and you wire your money and it's it's out of the country in minutes um, so that's kind of how the fraud works now that we've scared everybody <laughs> Um, hopefully that tells you to constantly like check and make sure your passwords are secure. Um, so as the title company though, um, how, like, how do you guys stop that from happening or what are some best practices that people could do? I know like even before, you know, whenever I tell people that they have to wire money, and if they get an email, I'm like, make sure to call your title company. Right. Like, I can give you the number. Yes. I, you know, make sure that all this is, but what, is, what are some things that people can do to ensure that that doesn't happen to them? I think the most important thing, you know, step one on day one is to have this conversation with you as the agent. You know, like you said, you've got this, this, this disclosure that talks about wire fraud. Have a conversation. Just be aware that this type of fraud is going on. The first thing that you should recognize too is when you're buying a house, you are now a target of a fraudster. So you need to be aware that you could be getting emails from that have nothing to do with your real estate transaction, but the whole goal is to try to get to got, try to get your password to your email. You know, a lot of people work with Gmail, um, Hotmail, you know, even AOL and stuff. Um, they're trying to gain access to your email account. So when you're buying a house, be aware that now you're you're going to be under a bunch of uh, uh, a bunch of fraudsters' eyes to be trying to gain access to your information. So the very best thing that you can do is for your email accounts is to have two-factor authentication turned on on your email. Two-factor authentication is the one where you get a text message in addition to your password. That way, if somebody gets a hold of your password for whatever reason, they can't log into your account without getting that text message. You do not want to be the leak to the uh, to the transaction. So make sure that you have that two-factor turned on. And then also just be aware that, again, since you're buying this house, you might have people, you know, kind of sniffing around and trying to trying to find stuff out. So that's the first thing that you can do is have this conversation and protect yourself with your own email. The next thing you can do is, is again, reach out to the title company and ask them, how are you going to be giving me my wire instructions? You know, at Fidelity, we're going to give you instructions uh, on how you're going to get your wire instructions very early on in the transaction. We're going to explain to you that they're never going to come from your realtor. They're never going to come from your lender. They're never going to come from anyone other than the title company. And if you're working with us, they're going to come from a, in a secure manner uh, that we're going to explain to you how it works. So again, just communicating with, with the parties involved in understanding this is where my wire instructions are going to come from. And then the other thing that we always tell people is that those wire instructions, they're not going to change. So once you get those wire instructions, one of the, the biggest frauds is for them to, to reach out afterwards and say, oh, sorry, things changed. Actually, send your money here. Oh, I didn't realize. I haven't heard of that. Yeah. So, so they try okay. to come in even after they've already received them and try to get people to sit there and say, oh, you know, something happened at the bank. We had to open a new account. Please send it here. So our wire instructions will not change. Okay. Um, and then always best practices after you have those wire instructions in your hand, call to verify that those instructions are correct. Call the title company, not from a number in the email, right. but from a verified phone number. Well, you and can, one thing ahead. to add on to that, um, and I have always told people, if you want, call me for the number for the title company. Yep. Right. Like it's very like I feel like I drill it into them, you know, mm -hmm. and just call me, call me, call me. Right. Um, and then I've had actually people, um, whenever they do get the secure link, then they'll right. call me because they think that that's a fraud. Right. Right. And and that's <laughs> and, and like, I think no, that's, that's a I think that's a good thing. Yeah. I think you should be suspicious of anyone asking you for money. Correct. Even if it's me, you know. Right. <laughs> I want you to be suspicious because that means you're thinking about it. And that's okay, you know, so you need to reach out again, reach out to you because like you said, you you know who I am, you know how to get a right. hold of me, you know who to reach out to. But again, you know, these fraudsters are so good at making and making things appear like they're coming from somewhere that they're not. Um, the other thing that you really have to watch out to is something we call spoofing. So what they do is they take an email address yeah. that and, and they just alter it just a tiny bit so you may not even recognize and then pretend to be somebody else. So they may pretend to be the title company. They may pretend to be you. They may pretend to be your lender, but it's not. 
So you need to, at the very beginning of the transaction, write down all the contact information, write down those email addresses. If you get a suspicious email, hit reply all and see where that email is going back to. A lot of times they can even play with the name that you receive it from. So, uh, and then the other thing to look out for in those emails are what time of day are you getting them? A lot of times these frauds are perpetrated from people around the world. So you may be getting an email in the middle of the night. I promise you, none of they're my not. employees are working in the middle of the night. Right. Um, so if you work seeing, hard, but not in the right. middle of the night. Exactly. So. so that's a main red flag. And another thing is a lot of these people, you know, English is not their first language. So the emails will have spelling and grammatical errors that just kind of stick out. So I like to think that my team can, you know, form a complete sentence and, and not misspell everything. So if you ever see anything like that, again, that's another red flag to just be aware. Um, just really scrutinize any any information that you get. Because um, like I said, they might not even be trying to get your wire instructions right away. It might be just kind of an intro just to kind of butter you up or find out more information about the transaction. Okay. Um, I, I will say like for the email that you mentioned, um, thank you for all of that. And like an example, I've gotten an email before it said like S mail. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I actually Googled because you can Google an email account. Yeah. You know what I mean? And see if it's legit one or not and if it goes right. to somewhere. So I Googled it and it was like, this is not a secure email. And I was like, delete, delete, delete. Right. Do not open up anything. Well, that's another thing too. I would say like, don't open up any links, any documents or click on anything that would even come in an email format yeah. that you would think of, you know, that right. could potentially be you know, exactly for wire, like to wire money or anything like that. Like yeah. call one of us. And a lot of times people too, you know, they think this can only happen to a buyer, but it can happen to a seller as well. You know, another scenario that could come up is say you're at a closing table and you decide that you would rather have your funds wired to you after the closing rather than take a check because the funds are immediate and you don't have to take a big check to the bank. So you fill out your wire instructions. Well, right on those wire instructions to whatever title company, this will not change. Because we have heard about instances where the people leave the closing, the people are somehow monitoring them. As soon as they know the closing's at three, and then at, at four o'clock, the fraudster calls the title company and said, hey, I know I gave you my wire instructions, but I actually want you to send the money here instead. So, you know, they're very, they're very good at this type of stuff too. So, you know, if you're getting money wired to you, you want to make sure that the, that the company's doing it, doing, <laughs> following the rules too, you know, again, uh, verify, verify, verify. Could you imagine like what good those people could potentially do in the world if their brain thinks yeah. like that, you know, they like took we that put actual it time. Use. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. So, it's incredible. I didn't realize that on the seller side. Yeah. Um, you know, there's all kinds of risks that can go, you know, anytime, you know, I used to joke, you know, like with when we used to have fraud, check fraud with uh, cashier's checks, I said, at least that took somebody coming into my office and lying to my face and handing me a fake check. Us working with wires, you're opening this up to the entire world, you know, and like I said, they can just do a little bit of Googling and find out a lot about a transaction without very much work within minutes. So you have to just be aware of what's going on and be working, you know, working with an agent like Aubrey who partners with people that take your information uh, privacy seriously. Thank you. <laughs> um, so actually I do have a question though. So what if something like that does happen? You know, and you're going to the transaction, you think you, you know, buyers thinking that they've wired their money mm -hmm. and you're sitting there signing paper, like what happens whenever you find out that you guys didn't end up getting the money? Yeah, so it's very scary. So that that's the problem is, is with these wire frauds, it's once you sent the money to a fraudster, what I've heard how it works is they send, you send a hundred grand to the wrong place. Within minutes, they've split that hundred grand up and they've wired it to, you know, 50 other accounts and then when it hits those 50 accounts they split it again and send it to 50 more accounts they kind of spider web out 
So the likelihood of getting your money back is very, very slim. Now there are some, uh, they say local, contact your local FBI field office. There's this website, ICM3, where you can go to. Um, I also have a page on my website that people can watch a short little video about how the fraud works. And then also has all the links if, uh, you, okay. know, if you did make that mistake. So bottom line is if you verify the wire instructions prior to being sent, um, you know, and follow everything, you should be okay. We don't want to scare people into not, you know, thinking this is, is right, but you know, you right. want to be working with people that recognize that this is an issue and it does happen. And it's happening in Cincinnati at an alarming rate. Well, I, and that's what, that was going to be one of my questions because you, re, you reached out to me yesterday, you know, and you're calling other agents and letting them know what's going on, right. but what prompted you? Yeah. So like, we, yeah, so realize we, you know, this. I'm, I'm constantly in contact with people in the industry and stuff too. And I started hearing a few things here and there. Oh, did you hear what happened to so-and-so's deal and that type of stuff. And I started kind of calling around and I kept talking to agents and they kept giving me more and more stories. Uh, from what I've determined is, you know, within the last couple of weeks, I can identify six to seven transactions where a buyer has wired their money to a fraudster within the last two weeks. So for whatever reason, Cincinnati seems to be getting hit really hard by this so i don't know again if they're just picking an area hitting it hard and moving on or if this is going to be a long-term thing or what but it seems to be a real concerted effort to be kind of uh you know hitting these transactions it's always been an issue but for whatever reason it really seems to ramp up in the fall um for what whatever whatever you know, i guess frost christmas is coming know. up i don't yeah. know yeah but so I'm not sure entirely sure why, but it, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's not like a, oh, we warned you about this. And then, you know, it's like getting hit by a hurricane in Cincinnati is very unlikely. No, it, this is, this is more like a, you know, a tornado where we are okay. in a tornado area. So. Yeah. I mean, like, cause I've never, I've never had it happen. Thank goodness to any of my buyers, but I have heard of the stories before, you know, and it's just always like, how does that happen? And I right. think sometimes I put the fear in my clients, you know, sometimes I have them calling me mm -hmm. to ask if they could put gas on their credit card. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I mean, there's, there's a lot to go on, you know, you're, you're doing, you're doing such yeah. a big financial uh, thing when you're buying a house, you know, and it's just, it's not about scaring people. It's more about informing people, you know, you know, knowledge is key. And if you know what's going on, it's easy to spot this stuff. Um, and like I said, if you follow the instructions that, you know, you receive and you, and you verify what's going on, there's nothing to worry about. But again, it starts with those initial conversations. It starts with, you know, recognizing that this is a real thing. Yeah, and that's what, you just gotta work with the right people and partner with the right people. Um, and a lot of times, um, people, like buyers and sellers don't realize this, like, so the buyer does choose the title company, yeah. but they're not all alike. Right. Um, and I know like whenever I have listings, I'll request that the buyer utilize, I mean, I'll ask that they use you, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I right. know that it's going to be done quickly and smoothly and right and especially like having somebody in our corner who is knowing what's going on and then reaches out to us to let us know and then you're taking extra precautions yeah um to do that. i think so that it really does make a difference you should you know when you're buying a house when you're selling a house i feel like you should be able to pick who you want like you said in your corner watching out for you so right just like anything else in in life you know you kind of you kind of you got to you know, decide who's, who's, who knows what they're talking about and who's going to do it right and, and start working with them. Um, you know, and, and, and work and when you're looking for an agent or a title company, you know, you need to, you need to be working with people that understand the entire transaction, not just how to get a contract accepted. It, there's more to it than that. You know, you work with somebody that understands how, how, how the whole transaction works, because there's more to this than just, you know, putting in an offer, giving some money and moving into your new house. There's, you got to be working with people that, that, like I said, understand everything from start to finish. There's a whole lot of stuff in between. Yes, exactly. And that accepted in the closing and even right. making sure that the closing goes smooth. Yep. Yeah. So yep. there's a lot of parts to it. Um, well, um, I'm not sure. I think that's pretty, I mean, I think you explained it all and kind of what's going on and, yep. 
just to always be looking out, you know, from the beginning, if you start to see something in the beginning of a contract and you're receiving emails like that, reach out to your realtor. Yeah. You know, if I happen to be that person, then you're calling me, text right. me. Um, I hear a lot people say, well, I don't want to bother you. Well, my job in, is to protect you. Dave's job is to protect you. You know, all the parties involved in the transaction, you know, we're representing you are to protect you. Yep. Um, so that's what we do together. Yep, um, exactly. Yeah. Do you have any last comments or I think no. we kind of- I think we kind of hit it all. You know, like I said, be safe, use two-factor authentication and just recognize when you're buying a house that, you know, you're going to be a, kind of the subject of a potential fraud and that you just need to be aware of it and that, you know, communicate with the parties involved and, and just, scrutinize everything that comes your way all right well thank you so much for your time dave yeah, of um if anybody has any questions about title or you know anything that, about their house with the title work is there any how can they get a hold of you yeah the best way to reach out to us is via our website fidelitylandtitle.com all right well thank you so much all right thanks all right